Hello and welcome to my video where I'm going to show you how to knit this very pretty pattern which features narrow softly winding cables. As you can see there are wavy cables running vertically down the knitting. This is a 20 row pattern repeat so it's pretty long but don't let that put you off and to start with you need to cast on a multiple of 8 stitches. I've personally cast on 16 stitches. And then for row number one, which represents the right side of the knitting, you need to begin with three purl stitches. Then take the working yarn between the needles to the back and do two knit stitches. Then bring the working yarn between the needles to the front again and do three purl stitches. And then you simply repeat these eight stitches. So that's purl three, knit two, and purl three. And then for row two and all even numbered rows going forward, we're going to knit the knits and slip all of the purls. What this means is that on every wrong side row, we're going to identify the knit stitches and then knit them and we're going to identify the purl stitches and slip them purl wise with the yarn in front. So just as you're about to knit the next row, take a look at the stitches right next to the left hand needle. You'll see that some of the stitches next to the needle are v-shaped and these are knit stitches, whilst other stitches have little bumps of yarn also called purl bumps and these are purl stitches. So for row two, you'll do three knit stitches, two slip stitches, six knit stitches, two slip stitches, and three knit stitches. And then for rows three and four, you just repeat rows one and two. And then we're on to row number five, which is the first cable row of the pattern. For the first two cables on this row, I'm going to be using a cable needle just to demonstrate the process. However, for the rest of the pattern, I'm not going to be using a cable needle at all. It's completely up to you if you want to use a cable needle or not. I just find it a bit fiddly to use a cable needle for cables that are so narrow. Okay, so for row number five, we begin with two purl stitches. We then need to do a one over one right purl cross or one slash one RPC. This just means that you're taking the top stitch on the left hand needle behind the second stitch on the left hand needle. To do this using a cable needle, use the short end to slip the top stitch purl wise onto it. Then place that cable needle at the back. Do one knit stitch, then purl the stitch off the cable needle. So bring the working yarn between the needles to the front and then treat the cable needle as if it were the left hand needle and just purl that stitch off it. You should now be able to see the start of a right leaning cable that's one stitch wide. We then need to do a one over one left purl cross or one slash one LPC. To do this, you take your cable needle and again slip one stitch purl wise onto it. This time though, you keep the cable needle at the front. Then bring the working yarn between the needles to the front and do one purl stitch. Then take the working yarn to the back again and knit the stitch off the cable needle. As you can see, this can be quite fiddly to do. Of 
and that's a 1 over 1 left purl cross completed. Then bring the working yarn to the front and purl 2. And then you just need to repeat these 8 stitches. So purl 2. And then you need to do a 1 over 1 right purl cross. Except this time I'm going to show you how to do this without a cable needle. So take your right hand needle in front of your left hand needle. Then pick up the second stitch along. And the aim here is to move just that second stitch to the right hand needle. So next you need to take the left hand needle out of the first two stitches. Like so. It might be a bit nerve wracking to see that stitch just suspended in midair. But now you're going to take your left hand needle into that stitch. Now you'll see that all we've done is move the second stitch onto the right hand needle. So all you're going to do is slip that stitch purl wise back onto the left hand needle. And the result of all of this is that you've just switched around the first and second stitches on the left hand needle. So they are now crossed. And then you just do a regular knit stitch and a regular purl stitch and that's the one over one right purl cross completed. Then we're on to the one over one left purl cross and again I'm going to demonstrate how to do this without a cable needle. So take your right hand needle behind the left hand needle this time and pick up the second stitch along. Then slide the left hand needle out of the first two stitches and then insert it back into the first stitch. You then need to slip the stitch that you've just moved to the right hand needle back onto the left hand needle and you do this by slipping it purl wise. Then you just do a normal purl stitch and a normal knit stitch. And that completes the one over one left purl cross. And to complete the repeating section, you just purl two stitches. If you haven't reached the end of your row yet, you just keep repeating those eight stitches. So now I've demonstrated how to do a one over one right purl cross and left purl cross with and without a cable needle, you can choose your favorite method from here on out. Okay, so for row number six, we just do the same as we do for every even numbered row and we knit the knits and slip the purls. So for this row in particular, you're going to repeat knit two, slip one, knit two, slip one, knit two. Then for row number seven, we're going to start with one purl stitch. Then we do a one over one right purl cross. So the right hand needle goes in front of the left, picks up the second stitch. You take the left hand needle out of the first two stitches and then back into the first stitch. Then slip the stitch on the right hand needle purl wise back onto the left hand needle. And then you knit one and purl one. Then you purl two and then do a one over one left purl cross. So take the right hand needle behind the left, pick up the second stitch, slip two stitches off the left hand needle and put it back into the first stitch. Slip the stitch purl wise from the right hand needle then purl one and knit one. And then to end the repeating section, you purl one. And then you simply repeat those eight stitches until the end of the row. Then for row eight, you knit the knits and slip the purls. I'm just pointing out the purl bumps, which is where you're going to slip the stitches. And in this case, you're going to repeat knit one, 
slip one, knit four, slip one and knit one. Row nine, you would begin with a one over one right purl cross. Then you would purl four and then do a one over one left purl cross. And you would repeat these eight stitches until the end of the row. Then row 10, you knit the knits and slip the purls. And in this case, you would repeat slip one, knit six, slip one. And for row 11, there's no cables. So all you have to do is knit one, purl six, and knit one all across the row. Row 12, you just knit the knits and slip the purls. And then rows 13 and 14 is just a repeat of rows 11 and 12. Then for row 15, you need to begin with a one over one left purl cross. Then purl four, and do a one over one right purl cross. And then just repeat those eight stitches across the row. As usual for row number 16, we knit the knits and slip the purls. And for row 17, we begin with one purl stitch. Then you need to do a one over one left purl cross. Then purl two. Then do a one over one right purl cross. and purl one stitch. Then simply repeat those eight stitches until the end of the row. For row 18, of course, you just knit the knits and slip the purls. And for row 19, you begin with two purl stitches. Then do a one over one left purl cross. Then a one over one right purl cross. And then purl two stitches. And repeat these eight stitches until the end of the row. And then for row 20, you of course knit the knits and slip the purls. And that's it, you've now completed the pattern repeat. And you can now see those narrow winding cables. I'm now going to knit the pattern repeat again and show you the result. Because this pattern contains so much stockinette stitch, it does tend to curl at the edges. So you'll need to add a border or like me, quickly block it to make it lie flatter. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and thank you very much for watching.